As we prepare for Season 5 of the Amazing Build series and the release of Elatria, we have to remember that not all hunters have access to the same gear, weapons and especially jewels. So I'm Darkblade with a budget build for the Hunting Horn in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now the main purpose of a budget build is to provide a build for newer hunters who do not have access to a large jewel collection. Thus the builds in these videos make use of a lot of alpha armor pieces and should allow for newer players to farm more jewels for their collection. The Hunting Horn is a unique and could be argued difficult weapon to master, but with the right skills combined with the right melodies and songs, the Hunting Horn can be quite powerful. For this budget build I'm showing off a Protection DPS Hunting Horn build. This combines DPS elements with survival elements to bring you quite a balanced Hunting Horn build. So, for this you'll need the Golden Headdress Beta, the Golden Loom Mail Beta, the Runus Van Braces Alpha, Golden Loom Coil Beta and the Rex Royal Greaves Alpha. I'm also using a Master's Charm 4 and for my weapon I'm using the Ruinous Desolation which is the Ruina Nergigante Hunting Horn. If you have access to augmentations, I recommend a health regen augmentation, affinity increase augmentation, and then an augmentation of your choice to which I've gone for a defense increase augmentation. As for the specialized tools, these are down to personal preference. As for the jewels, remember with these budget builds, these are aimed for players who do not have access to a large jewel collection, so rare jewels aren't really used in these builds whatsoever. However, there are jewel sockets and it's wise to use them if you can. So I'd recommend vitality jewels for the health boost skill, attack jewels to increase our attack boost a little bit, Sonorous Jewels for the Horn Maestro skill, and then you'll have some jewels to play around with, to which I've gone for KO Jewels for the Slugger skill. Of course, if you do not have what I've shown here, replace them with what you have available to you. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which would be 200 health and 150 stamina. When you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables, you have an attack of 1331. With maxed out white sharpness, you have 35% base affinity, which can be 85 so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. This can even be 95% once the agitator buff is active. You have a dragon rating of 210 with high elder seal, and when it comes to the songs, the ruinous desolation has decent ones including self improvement, health recovery S, affinity up, earplugs L, and when it comes to the Echo Waves, you'll have Echo Waves Dragon and Extended Health Recovery. And then finally, when it comes to your defense, you have Strong Defense of 1054, that is strong against Fire and Dragon, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. So, as for the skills, you have a few of them. First is Agitator at level 5. Agitator is a wonderful skill for Iceborne, which gives us a buff when a monster becomes enraged, increasing our raw attack as well as affinity. And as you can easily control when a monster becomes enraged, thanks to the whole flint shot mechanic, it's quite useful. You also have Divine Blessing level 6. Divine Blessing is a wonderful quality of life and defensive skill. When you take a hit from a monster, there's a chance that you'll receive less damage. And with Divine Blessing at level 5, this chance of taking reduced damage is at its highest. Anyway, you have Attack Boost level 4. Attack Boost is a skill that increases our raw attack and at level 4 or above, it gives us a bonus 5% extra base affinity. You have Critical Eye level 4 which increases our base affinity rating. You have health boost level three, which allows our health to get to a maximum of 200. You have weakness exploit level three, which is a skill that increases our affinity when we're attacking monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through clutch claw attacks first, this increase to our affinity is even greater. At weakness exploit at level three, it can be a potential bonus 50% extra affinity. You have slugger level three, which is a byproduct of the jewels we're wearing, but is useful for the hunting horn as it's a blunt weapon that can easily knock out monsters. Basically slugger makes it easier for us to knock out monsters. And then finally you have horn maestro level two, which is thanks to the sonorous jewels. This is a hunting horn only specialist skill that allows the melodies and songs to remain active for longer periods of time. So you don't have to reapply them. Now this skill is associated to the sonorous jewels, but if you didn't have them, it's not too big of an issue. It just means that you'll have to play the songs and refresh them more often during a hunt. And then finally for the set bonus, you only have one of them, which is the Gold Raffian Essence Divine Blessing Secret, allowing the Divine Blessing skill to go from level three to a maximum of level five, greatly increasing our survivability. So there we have it. That is the budget hunting horn build I'd recommend. But every build out there has pros and cons. Even the strongest build out there has a few nitpicks that could be classed as cons. With the Hunting Horn budget build, its biggest pro is its strong attack. Thanks to combining many attack skills, such as Agitator, Attack Boost, Critical Eye and Weakness Exploit, you could also include Slugger in this in some respects, you're able to take on monsters quite effectively with this build. Although the Hunting Horn isn't the fastest DPS weapon out there, these skills combined with the Ruinous Desolation means that we should be hitting monsters quite hard. On top of that, it's quite a defensive build as well. Thanks to making use of health boost and especially Divine Blessing with Divine Blessing Secret, it means that we should be able to survive even the strongest attacks unless we're exceedingly unlucky. 
And then finally for the pros, this build can be used pretty much against any monster thanks to the Ruinous Desolation having high raw attack and very low dragon rating. But of course there are cons. The biggest con for this build, which is a con more for new players more than anything else, is that it includes some Rajang gear. Rajang isn't the easiest monster to take on for new players out there, but the struggle is worth it as you do get some useful armor and weaponry. And the other con is unfortunately this build doesn't have any handicraft, so if you did want to use a different weapon that potentially could get to purple sharpness, you're going to have to make sacrifices elsewhere, which could be an issue. But nonetheless, this is an effective hunting horn build, which is great for both team and solo play. So that is the budget build for the Hunting Horn. Of course, as you farm more and more, hunters will get more gear and weaponry, as well as expand their jewel collection. When this happens, I hope the other builds featured in the Amazing Build series will come in useful. So until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you a budget build for the Hunting Horn in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.